Greetings and peace, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today, I have the honor and privilege and pleasure of being joined by my sister from another mother, Victoria Amadea. I first ran into Victoria when I was looking through TikTok, and just like how one light recognizes another light, uh, how souls recognize each other, I was drawn to her message and her presence and her vibration of light. I recognize her as a light for humanity in this pivotal time of turmoil that we're in and her guidance and tutelage for all of us. And um, I will put her TikTok link in the description below. And I was so excited to just have her on uh, to talk about her perspective on these different questions from my Sufi reality and her reality of diff uh, dealing with different um, traditions and systems that are out there. So, without further ado, welcome to Victoria. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Salman. You're going to make me cry with such a, a warm introduction. Thank you so much, and I appreciate you. I'm so grateful that we've been connected. Um, Allah has a strange word, a way of making uh, connections, so I'm so very grateful that we cross paths with one another. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, so my first question, Victoria, is who is Victoria Amadeo for those that don't know? Hi, yes. Uh, so I am someone who started with kind of a, a Mormon background. It's um, Mormon Latter-day Saints. Um, but I, I got to a point where I started being called towards esoteric traditions, towards the inner work. Um, and I just felt like it was something kind of embedded in my soul, you know, so I was born in a Mormon household, but who you are in spirit, um, sometimes goes beyond the constructs of the kind of, um, life or family or environment you might be born in. So I, um, came from this background, um, but then there's just many different things that kind of unfolded through my life, um, and we can, we can talk about that next, um, where I just started being called towards ex exploring more, discovering more. There was just a, a feeling and knowing in my soul, in my mind, in my heart of a a greater universe of a creator of other realms and realities and beings that saw through the physical world and perceived that the physical world is just one place but there's actually so much more um, entailed than this creation Yes, that's definitely right. And we are told from the Sufi perspective about how Allah, God, has created all of these realms and beings just for submission to the will of God, to serve God. And that, I think that's amazing you had that experience and you were able to see through that that veil. And I, it's that's absolutely amazing, which goes to my next question is, what led you on the spiritual esoteric path? So, as a child, um, I had some spiritual gifts. I was uh, clairvoyant. I could see spirits. Um, from a very young age, I had a, a strong knowing that I was a spirit in a body and that there was something more. Um, when I... When I turned 13 and I became under the influence of the moon, something awakened within my soul. It was like an activation um, where more things started coming into me. Um, my, my spiritual sense, senses were heightened. I could feel the presence of guides and spirits on the other side who were communi communicating to me and letting me know that they were there and reminding me that uh, I am a spirit more than just my physical body to try to remember who I am um, on the other side, to know that I'm, I'm here on earth for a time and a reason, um, but to kind of embrace that there is a larger creation, a larger reality, uh, that my my spirit is from another place, but I'm here on earth 
going through what we all go through. And it, you know, it's, it's very peculiar because it wasn't an, an intellectual exploration. It, it started with an, an innate knowing, uh, an innate activation and remembrance. And it just felt right. Sometimes there's things that are already a part of you and embedded in you. And you feel, you feel called to pursue that. So my, my spiritual esoteric path has taken many, several different traditions. Um, I started um, in my youth kind of practicing Wicca and witchcraft because that was readily available to me as a teenager. And it, it seemed like one method outside of Mormonism that kind of gave me a sense of how to work with different kind of forces and other things. However, that that also activated a lot of uh, darkness in my life. I mean, there was already kind of darkness in the environment I grew up in. I grew up on a Navajo reservation. Um, but then I ended up meeting a spiritual teacher um, <clears throat> from a tradition in Japan that really helped me to transcend and pull myself out of the kind of darkness that was kind of surrounding me and trying to consume me and really gave me kind of tools and language to understand Allah presence, uh, divine providence on another level of reality and to kind of remember who my, my highest self is and have a different construct of how to see the world and understand the forces of the world. And I went on to explore several spiritual esoteric traditions um, within Buddhism and other traditions. Um, I've also, through a friend, <coughs> met up with a Sufi group um, in the area I lived and. Sufism, I, I instantly felt the connection with. As you mentioned before, what I love about Sufism is surrendering to the will of God. And I feel like when you align yourself with the will of God, there is an immense grace. There is an immense beauty. It, when you remember that you are of the Creator, and you wish to return to the Creator or Allah, you, your heart wants to be aligned with Allah and to work with Him. Um, like I had a, a knack for writing uh, mystic poetry, you know, which is kind of like a Sufi thing. And um, I've had dreams of different Islamic Muslim <laughs> mages like talking with me and meeting with me on the other side and teaching me and feeling like I knew these spirits already. I didn't have their name, but it's like, oh, I already had a connection with them. That's that's absolutely amazing and wonderful. And you're right. You, you listen to your intuition, Victoria, and that's the Sufi path when Rumi says, you must listen to that voice inside that does not speak. So you listen to that divine guidance within your heart, and it divinely guided you on your path. And you met a teacher, like how in Sufism we have a sheikh or a guide, a guide who is there to mentor you uh, throughout the journey of life. And myself, a lot of people told me that I come from the Palladian star family, and I have these different guides that are looking out for me. In my youth, I never understood what these people were talking about. But over time, as I, as I go into my 30s, I realized through my own experiences and epiphanies what those paths were teaching us. Uh, the Sufi path, when someone in Islam passes away, we say to Allah, we belong, and to him we shall return, meaning... You are a part of that divine energy that's experiencing reality. When Rumi says that you're a mineral, then you become a plant, then you become an animal, then you become a man, then you become an angel, and then the angel goes back to God. So your true origin is always going to be there. And I really connected with you on the Navajo re reservation part since myself. 
I carry an indigenous ancestry, too, with the Alaskan Siberian natives. Being from the Pakistan area, since all of that was connected at one time, and so that's, that's absolutely wonderful. You connected with these different saints in the higher realms, the, the different Sufi sheikhs who are there as a guiding force, and I think that's absolutely wonderful. You have a divine spirit and a divine heart, and a lot of these sheikhs, even even in my own journey and path of Pakistan, um, you do not have a pure heart or a pure soul, or if your intents are not right, these people would not even speak to you. So I think that's wonderful that they saw you for who you are and they guided you on the other side as well. Which goes to my next question. In your spiritual encounters, have you found quote-unquote God or Allah to have a feminine energy because the Sufis always talk about being united with their beloved and also in the Holy Quran chapter 17 verse 110 Allah says to call upon Rahman which is a feminine name of Allah out of the 99 names so out of all of the names of Allah of God, Allah says, call me Rahman, which is a feminine name. So have you found that feminine energy of God since the patriarchy has kind of uh, gave us a different worldview? Yeah, this is a wonderful question. And I'm so, I'm so glad you touched on it because there is kind of information about the divine feminine, return of the divine feminine, resurrection of the divine feminine. Um, and I love that you mentioned finding the beloved because that's that's such an intimate and sacred thing to me that that beloved union with uh, God Allah in, in one's heart and and then the feminine energy like with Abrahamic traditions um, how how kind of the esoteric format is laid out is usually from a masculine perspective so I've I'm very familiar with the masculine aspect of God. And from kind of my background, I came to revere the, the masculine aspect of God. However, I do strongly believe there's a feminine aspect as well. I mean, even in Mormonism, even though I'm not Mormon, they talked about how God has a wife. Um, but that they did not present his wife's name because God wanted to protect her. Um, you find this in other traditions, too, like Gnosticism, where there is a divine feminine. Um, you find this, um, you know, within the Wicca community about trying to find the goddess. Uh, His Holiness, that the Dalai Lama said that it would be the Western woman who would save the world. And we live in a world um, of duality. So there's darkness and light, yin and yang, but I believe there's also masculine and feminine. And we are in a society that has a lot of um, masculine constructs. Um, But I also believe that we need to have that balance. So if we look at it from kind of an elemental perspective, say fire represented the masculine and water the feminine, um, you need to have the balance between the both. And the the feminine energy, I think, is is seeking a voice. It is seeking to kind of rise up. So I feel like in in this world, often the the feminine energy is subjugated to a downward polarity. So even within fem- the feminine energy. There is um, darkness and light. But I feel like females, the feminine energy, um, you know, on earth as an extension as the divine feminine in higher realms is, you know, often subjugated to abuse or um, being suppressed. So I think it's a delicate matter of that feminine energy trying to find its beauty and resonance and expression here on earth so there are kind of divine feminine attributes Uh, traditionally we could see this as taking care of the hearth taking care of others um, being a, a vessel of divine love and 
sometimes there's not, at least in the physical world, those environments and paradigms that support the divine feminine to express itself. So I feel like the divine feminine is kind of veiled and covered and suppressed, but that there is a a force behind this world where the divine feminine is trying to find expression. To the, the feminine, one attribute is to receive. And often the feminine, you know, operating within the masculine paradigm have to take action and take on masculine attributes. I've definitely done that myself in the modern world. But, you know, even within, say, a feminine, a feminine vessel like myself, you still have the duality of a masculine aspect and a feminine aspect. Um, but I feel like there, there is a imbalance and that the divine feminine should it find more expression in this reality would ripple out and have a positive effect upon mankind provided it is the, the positive aspect of the divine feminine that does come out into the world um, but then again it's about creating those micro situations where that can help so i think it's difficult to cause a large change on the entire world stage at once and often it begins with the individual and the people so provide it be within families communities cities creating um, environments and structures where the divine feminine can find her voice um, and i see this in other traditions that i'm a part of of women trying to find their presence for example in a, a magical tradition i'm in um, i have a small group of women and you know they're also trying to find their place within that tradition um, so i think there's kind of an, an uphill battle of the divine feminine finding its place but then also how it how it's trying to express itself. Um, I think there is kind of a bubbling within a lot of women of, because we all have a higher self, in my opinion, and if their higher self is feminine, that desire to connect with it, as we have the desire to connect with the beloved. Um, <laughs> so, so that's my answer. Oh, thank you so much, Victoria. And that reminds me of the Bismillah Rahman Rahim, where we say in Islam, in the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Most Merciful. Uh, Rahim is classified as masculine and Rahman is feminine. So God, even in the Sufi Islamic tradition, is shown to us to have an androgynous energy where it's genderless, formless. And even in Islam, uh, a man is not complete until he comes into a union with a woman. And a woman is not complete and she, until she comes into a union with a man. So that andro androgynous energy of the creator, we even mentioned that in our path. And you're right, the masculine and the feminine, we have to balance that out within ourselves and within each other. And it's it's got to be small steps. It can't be, the, the change cannot just happen overnight. And as we see in our current time, of humanity that we're in there are many changes which are changing the world as we know it so i thank you for this answer and i hope uh, others have benefited from it as well which goes to my next question many spiritual paths including sufism say to find allah or god within when we're told in surah 50 of the quran that god is closer to us than our jugular vein la ilaha illallah there is no god but god nothing exists truly but God. What say you on this? I believe this as well. From my from my meditative and my inner work, I have found my own personal revelations that God is everywhere. God created all things, so we are all of God. 
um, even the physical items before you came into being because of God. And I found in my heart from mystic work that a, a revelation and knowing and abiding in presence that God is actually here in everything at all times. God is, is always watching, always present. And by grace, I found the revelation to perceive why God might not interfere on some things. I know some people get angry with God and Allah, and they think, oh, why did they let these these wars happen and these bad things to happen? But, but a greater understanding and perspective of his plan for creation and what he's permitted us to do and the, the long journey of mankind. Um, but I think that one thing that helps us is to remember that God is always there and to always keep to our faith in God and to remember that we are of God. We were created in his image and that Allah has a plan for us and that we can return to him. Yes, definitely. That, that is so correct. And most people have to realize that even in the Sufi path, one of the 99 names of Allah is Al-Basir. And Al-Basir is the all-seeing eye, what you know as the eye of providence in other traditions. And what that is telling you that the Creator is always watching. And when you submit to the will of God, that is the definition of a Muslim. Anyone who submits to the will of God is a Muslim. And it even says that in Surah 2, verse 62 of the Quran, that God doesn't care if you're a Jew, Muslim, or Christian. It's about you being an upright, righteous human being with an upright character. Which goes to my next question, Victoria, is how do you see the divine feminine changing the world down the road? We see so much abuse happening against the feminine in these different industries in America and across the world. So how do you see, once that power really comes, how do you see the divine feminine changing the world down the road? Well, one aspect of the divine feminine is softness and receiving. And I think sometimes the world is too much on the polarity of hardness and um, action and giving. Of course, these are all forces within creation. There's several forces that have to come into play, give and take, uh, darkness and light. But, and you know, I'm not really sure how the divine feminine is going to transform in the decades and centuries to come. I think there is a... I wouldn't say a push, but a, a beckoning on the other side for the divine feminine to express itself more in the other in, in the world. And one way we can see this, and it's not exclusive to the feminine, but it can be considered a feminine attribute, is, is caring and looking out for each other. You know, if there's war and strife in countries or cities or homes, that, that reminder that each person can make a change, can make a difference. It's a small acts of kindness and goodwill, say even within war-torn countries, that begin to make a difference. Or even in countries that aren't having difficulties or challenges, but by each person... Focusing on love, um, which I know love through the feminine and also the masculine aspect with the union with the beloved, love begins to transform things. Um, they say love can conquer all things, and love is a powerful force, in, including the love of Allah and the divine. But we can also be vessels and vehicles for these higher qualities of Allah to express itself in the world. And I think love is one way that the divine feminine can transform the world 
in the future. But then again, you know, both man and woman can be um, vessels for that love and show that love here on earth. Yes, definitely. And I, I see that, too, in people who are, let's say, feeding the homeless or doing charitable works. They're allowing that divine energy to guide them, to help others, because we're always taught that Allah does not come directly to help you. He'll use a, a fellow human being to come and help you or guide you or say something to you as a message from the divine, as we are taught that in all of the universe, not only Earth, after God, man is the highest ranking creature, even after jinns and angels. But I think in our current fallen state, we, we have forgotten our value and the responsibility that God has given us to be the caretakers of each other and this planet. But uh, I believe you're right. As time goes on, we will see that small change happen day by day, month by month, year by year. And it all starts within us. Which goes to my next question. Uh, you mentioned that you were guided by Sufi sheikhs and uh, Islamic saints on the other side. And what do you find the prophets and messengers and the saints to be in your path? Like we have Jesus, Muhammad, Solomon, David, uh, all of these great teachers that came, peace be upon them, to guide humanity. So what do you find all these sources of light to be in your path? You know, I, I find them to be my family, and that's a big thing for me. When I connect with these spirits and guides on the other side, I feel like they're my family. They're my brothers. They're my sisters. They care about me. They love me. They know we are here on Earth going through our, our experiences, our growth, our challenges, trials and tribulations. But they, from my view, they are on the other side, and they love and care about us so deeply, and they want to help us succeed. They want to help us overcome our difficulties. They want to see us reach and achieve the light again. And through Revelation, I've seen that, you know, sometimes when they're unable to interfere directly it causes them great pain and sadness i'm getting emotional because they do they do love and care for us so much um and sometimes we may not see that um but they are there with us and they do care about us and they are waiting for us to return to them yes and and i i've experienced that myself a lot of uh, the Sufi teachers I've had in my path, they always tell me that you have uh, the presence of Prophet Muhammad in your life, or some will say you have the presence of Prophet Isa, Jesus in your life. And, and I'm truly grateful. Maybe in my current um, spiritual state, I'm not able to recognize that yet, but I do feel that energy of love, abundance, and protection always around me that no matter how bad of a situation I got in into my life or whoever was against me, I always came out on the other side. And I think that's the thing. If you have a pure heart, like how you do, Victoria, that we're always going to be loved, protected, and provided for on this journey of life. We let the, uh, uh, I guess, the simulation sometimes overwhelm us, but we, we are taught in the Islamic perspective that, that the life of this world is nothing but an illusion. We just have to try our best with um, the purpose that we've been sent here for, which goes to my next question is that we are taught that Allah is the executor of both good and evil, the giver and the taker. I would have even says in the Bible as well that he giveth and he taketh. Have you encountered the God energy of both both sides on your path and how we're also taught in Islam that um, Allah says that we will test you with both good and evil, and to us you shall be returned. Yeah, this this is a great question. Um, as Allah being the executor of good and evil, the giver and the taker, I do firmly believe that all things in creation 
or by God's will. Goodness and evil serves a purpose. And there's the left hand of God and the right hand of God. And the evil has varying degrees, but on one level, it is there to, to test us. And I have experienced both sides of the path. And, you know, through great trials and tribulations, thanks to the grace of Allah, I've had revelation in hindsight how experiencing evil has actually been a way to temper my soul, to work through darkness, to find my own bearings and sword, so to speak, to stand in darkness, and to, to realize within this reality we live in, the duality serves a purpose. There is a mechanism. It is by the darkness we come to know the light. And we are in we are in these human vessels that are subject to, you know, birth, aging, decay, and death. And simultaneously, the darkness and light both work. And you know, they have their different intelligences and agendas and gradations of influence. Um, however, when you kind of stay, step back and try to look at things from the eye of Allah to the extent we can, I believe that they're all serving a purpose. And evil, even the evils we endure, I believe that nothing happens if God does not allow it. So, if God has allowed something to have faith in God's plan. However, I also believe in taking accountability and responsibility that if you're seeing evil or injustice happening in the world, and if you feel a calling to intercede to do so, as you mentioned um, earlier, that Allah can use us as vessels for him here on earth. So we can't always expect divine intervention. We, we are soldiers on the ground, so to speak. So if we, if we can find a way to prevent evil where we can and be ambassadors of the light, but then also recognize that sometimes evil does serve a purpose. It does have a means. Uh, Allah allowed evil to come into creation. So it is part of his plan. Yes, that's definitely right. And that, that reminds me of the concept of how many people see Iblis or Lucifer, that energy that he's still serving God to this day, that many Sufis refer to him as Shaykh al Anbiya, the master of the Shaykhs. Why? Because he loved Allah more than anyone else and he refused to bow down to anyone else but Allah the Creator. And that is true in Islam as well. You're not supposed to bow down before anything but the Creator. So when he was told to bow down before Adam and he refused, I think that was a part of a, in my opinion, a grander scheme of things where he was put down in this realm to test humanity, meaning whoever tries to get close to Allah or God, he will put the test and trials and tribulations in their life, meaning that if you were worthy enough for that creator's love, he would personally open up the door for you to go to your creator, as he's described as God's most jealous lover. So you're right. I mean, uh, it's it, even that one Sufi story where a man is drowning and he asks God, God, please help me, please help me. And then a, a, a boat comes and tries to rescue him and he refuses. Now, this happens three or four times. And then when he finally drowns, he asks God, why didn't you help me? And God said, I did help you when I was sending those people to come and help you in the boat, but you refused. So that's absolutely correct. When that concept of good and evil is balanced out in this life, 
it's us. We are given that divine guidance like, hey, you should do this. You should speak out against this. You should go to this protest or you should get involved in this. That's that divine voice that's guiding us to do the good on its behalf on this earth. So we are all soldiers on, on, on this path. And um, I'm glad to meet a fellow soldier like yourself on this path as well. Which goes to my next question. If today was your last day on earth, what would you do and also say to those that you love or your message to humanity, including um, what we see with the Native American reservations and how those people are treated? What what message would, would you give to humanity, Victoria? So for the first point, what would you do? I would celebrate. And this is, it might sound morbid to some, but I have and this is being more, more personal and intimate, but I have such a, a strong yearning to be reunited with the other side. So first, I would be grateful that when my time has come, that I fulfilled my path and the purpose that Allah and God has given to me. But I would also rejoice, because that means I could return. Um, what I would say to those who I love is to remember God is always with you. That our time here is, is so short. We, we experience time while here, but when we go to the other side, we realize we're outside of time. And we have the perspective to comprehend and understand I was operating in time. But that time has passed because my, my vessel is no longer. And and you appreciate that life is a chance. It's an experience to cultivate your continued learning and growth. Um, you know, on, in, on behalf of the greater creation and what Allah has set for us. My, my message to for the, the Native Americans is I believe they've had very deep relationship with the earth and this can kind of tie back to our previous question of the divine feminine because in many native traditions they revered mother earth and loving mother earth and honoring her and i think we've we have gotten away from that um where the earth is abused and perverted um, and taken advantage of. And I feel like the earth is such an incredibly intelligent, large spirit of itself that is holding all of us like a mother and taking care of us. Um, but the earth is also failing all of these uh, side effects of the way mankind is using her. And that, and that while Mother Earth is great and has the capacity to hold so much and is trying to sustain all of these negative forces upon her, there, there's still repercussions and side effects that begin to bubble up and manifest themselves um, upon this, on this planet Earth. And my message to humanity in general would be to love your brother, to, to seek the goodness and light, but also understand that we are in a world of duality. We, we are not exclusively of light while we're here. We have darkness and light, but our origins are of light. So the call is to remember who you are in, in true spirit and to align your heart and mind with the light, but understand that while we are of the light, we are also here and must navigate through duality. Thank you. Thank you so much. And this, this remind, reminds me of 
uh, the surah from the Quran, the earthquake, Surah Zalzala, which tells us that it describes earth as a female being and a female entity. And it says that one day will come where the earth will release all of her burdens and mankind will say what is wrong with her. And the good people will be shown the good that they have done and the evil people will be shown the evil that they've done. And you're right, we need to take care of each other. We need to love and respect and uplift one another and guide each other home. Uh, I always say this myself that our real purpose of life is what good did we do for each, each other and ourselves and that we're walking each other home and owe this love and light to one another. Because the short human life, our money, our degrees, homes, titles, um, bank accounts, we're going to leave all that behind. We're just going to take the good with us. And when someone does return to that source of light after passing, I think instead of mourning them, we should celebrate it, that they've been united with that source and they fulfilled their purpose here on this life. And I think that that is a, um, a wonderful way of looking at it. So I, I thank you for that very much. Which goes to my next question. What do you recommend to those seeking light? I see so many traditions and paths and esoteric initiatic orders out there. It's just a, a vast amount of stuff to look into in both the East and the West. So for those that are divinely guided to follow the light, what do you recommend for them to do? I, I recommend two things. One, for them to find the light within themselves, but also to align themselves with the light above. I think, I think you need both because the light within you is of the light above. And by having that connection with the light within yourself, it establishes that channel with the light above. However, I think we also need to understand that while we can cultivate that light, as I mentioned before, we still exist within duality. So we still may be exposed and subject to duality and darkness, but hold fast to that light. Um, I think in, in the Bible, there's a, a passage about holding to the golden rod. That's, that's the golden rod. That's your connection to Allah and God. And to find within your heart that part of you that is of God and from God and returns to God. And knowing you will be tested. I've, you know, I've, I've been hit with incredible darkness at various times. But if you remember, when everything passes, all we have is light. When the world ends, creation ends, we return to light. Light is the one true source, our true home, and where we truly belong, in my opinion. So remember that Everything here is temporary, but the light within us is forever, and that is your safe passage home. So as, you know, storms may rage at different seasons of your life, look for that, this might sound campy, but look, look for that lighthouse. Always seek that lighthouse, and even if it's dark and you can't see the lighthouse, just know that it's there. And keep rowing towards it. Have faith that the light is there. And if you keep your intention and direction towards it, it will reveal itself. But as you mentioned, sometimes we are tested. We have to have faith that even when we do not see it, it is still there for us. Yes, yes. And I, and, and I thank you for that. Because it does tell us in the Quran as well that everything will perish except his face meaning that in the beginning was only God, and in the end, it's only going to be God. And we're all conduits of that love, light, and energy, and we just have to hold fast to that rope of God, how it says in the Quran as well, to hold to the rope of Allah. And many initiatic orders have the concept of a rope or cable tow in their initiatic systems to basically give you that allegory teaching of holding on to the rope of God 
And I think that's that's absolutely amazing. And that's what we, we, we got to find that light within ourselves because the true initiation, like you said, happens within the heart. So we must find it within ourselves, know what this existence is about and submit to the will of God and everything will work out accordingly. Which goes to my next question, Victoria. It's based on reincarnation. I know Rumi also says that we go from a mineral to a plant to an animal, to a man, and then angel, and then God. And there was another Sufi sheikh who taught me that it takes us 70,000 veils to get back to Allah, meaning that one life will be 70 years old, another life will be 50 years old, another life will be 80 years old, until all of those lifetimes add up to 70,000, and then your soul returns back to Allah, the Creator. Which goes to my question, since all of our practices are integrated with personal experiences, I'm curious to know your thoughts on reincarnation, past life connections. For example, why you, why you are who you are today, soul contracts, life's purposes, etc., and its connections with zodiacs and planets. You mentioned some beings already knew who you are when you visited their planet and domain. Now, I've had this experience, too, where some people told me that I was a religious figure in past lives here on Earth, and I'm here to do that work again. So please take it away. Yeah, you know, having a connection with reincarnations in past lives has been incredibly empowering for me because it, it gives me the perspective and the reminder that this this soul's journey has been long it's not just this one lifetime it has been through, through several lifetimes where we learn different things we experience different things we may partake in various traditions and we we meet um several spirits over and over again you know maybe you and i have known each other from at least one past life or if not more and in terms of kind of how they make us who we are today, at one level, I don't find that our incarnations are linear. One adept had told me that you can actually reincarnate into the past, which I found quite curious. Um, but when you perceive reality from eternal light, from my experience, I've, I've witnessed what I would call a moment of everything that has, is, or will happen, all came to pass in one flash of light. Yet within the construct of creation, we experience it linearly. So when you can transcend to a certain domain of light, the, the, the direction doesn't matter. You know, you can, you can touch the past, present, and future all at once. Um, but then you come to appreciate that all of it has been part of your, your higher self and Allah's plan for you. I've had a meditative experience of standing in light and just seeing several of my lifetimes surrounding me as if they were all happening at once, but I was perceiving them from the perspective of my highest self and understanding that they're all serving a respective purpose um, and a plan within each lifetime. And one life you may need to work on one things, and another life you may need to work on another. Um, but from the perspective of your eternal self, in my opinion, you you agree that you will go forth and do what each life kind of dictates for you, the plan of it. So, like, soul contracts, one's life purpose, 
you, I believe you, you have a pre-incarnation agreement of these are the things I will experience within my life. These are the things mandated for above, from above. My, my eternal self, the part of me that is one with the beloved, knows this, agrees to it. It, it guides me. Your, your inner light had already said, yes, this is what I will do. I, I am willing to go to earth. I am willing to do these things, to experience these things. And understanding how it's not just part of your journey, but also the journey of the other beings around you. You know, pre-agreements that you will meet certain people, work with certain people, that we're all taking part in a larger plan of creation. And um, to the question about already knowing spirits, um, I haven't mentioned here, but I know you're familiar from some of my TikTok videos. I've um, I've mental wandered to different planetary spheres or different domains, and like a sense of knowing these beings already, and that that goes to, goes to my my mention of having an awareness of existence on the other side, and. A, a family and a support system that is there and these these beings you know when you step outside of time uh, with your mind your heart um, we can find you know again to that every light containing everything there is no linear thing so when I step on the other side I can reconnect the spirits that I've known even though it may be different times throughout human history uh, when when you're on the other side you know I believe we're part of a larger community a larger support system and just as here on earth we're having a, a, a conversation and communion you know we don't just float float alone in space when we're on the other side we have a uh, relationships uh work with other people and when it comes to like the zodiacs and the planets i feel like those are some universal forces that kind of imprint upon the clockwork of allah's creation so as you mentioned that we we go from a mineral to a plant um, to a human to an angel to with god um, those those are organic processes, and the the universe, you know, our bodies are organic. We live on an organic plane, so there is an organic process that is also moving humanity and creation. Uh, from my perspective, for example, through the aspects of the zodiac and the planets but also the forces of lightness and dark and the will of Allah. I feel like the zodiacs and the planets are tools by which he kind of sustains his plan for creation. Yes, that's definitely right. And I know even in the um, Islamic arts and sciences, a lot of the stars have Arabic names and astronomy and the, the liberal arts. We are taught to give credence to all of these forms of expression of our love to the divine will. And studying the planets, how Venus is sometimes associated with love and Islam, the color green, how many saints wear the color green. I think it's all interconnected, Victoria, and I, and I thank you so much for sharing this with me. And you're right, we probably do, do know each other from a past lifetime. That's why I instantly connected with you on TikTok, and I recognized that fellow light. And in Sufism, I've noticed this too, that sheikhs who have never physically met each other, but if I would mention the name of another sheikh from another area, they would instantly recognize who that is because... The Walis, or the friends of Allah, the lights of God, all recognize each other. And I think that's the, um, that's the beauty of this path. 
where we we do have in Islam the concept of Rajabul Ghaib, the men of the unseen, who operate in the 3D realm and they operate in other realms too, to aid and assist humanity along with the Ahlul Bayt, the family of the of the Prophet. So thank you for this, which goes to my final question, Victoria, is since we're approaching the one hour mark, any closing thoughts or anything I fail to ask you, please take your time. Thank you. And, and thank you so much again for having me on. Um, for my clo closing thoughts, thoughts, I would like to return to something I already mentioned, but I think it's incredibly important, is to remember the light that is inside of you, the light that is always with you, and to cultivate your relationship with the Creator. While, you know, we are here on Earth, we have so many shiny objects to that catch our attention, and, you know, we have these different things that we must you know, go through with life, you know, different relationships and careers and finances and, you know, challenges and growth and schools and friendships. You know, those are part of life. Appreciate those. Go through those. But remember your heritage, your true heritage, which is of the divine. And that while you are here, you are a participant of Allah's creation. Allah has gifted that to you. You get to be here and experience these things. But remember your true source, your true origin, and your true home where you will return to one day. So give, give praise and gratitude to Allah for all he has given you, all that he will give to you. But Moreover, that you will be able to return to him. Carry your love for him in your heart. And he, he always loves you, even if you don't feel that love. But open your heart to him and receive his love. And invite Allah's love into your heart. And he would be happy to embrace you and to be with you and to cultivate that relationship with him with Allah for even though we are of Allah we must also choose Allah and decide to direct ourselves towards him alhamdulillah this is beautiful victoria and uh, thank you for sharing this with me and it reminds me of how it says in the quran that if you are grateful God will always give you more and expand you more in all facets of your life. And how even the Sufi, no matter what good or time, good or bad times of your life, you must always say Alhamdulillah and give praise to the Creator. Because you don't remember the Creator just in bad times, but if you remember Him in all times, then you will surely be loved, protected, and provided for. And I, I can't tell you how thankful I am for you, how grateful I am for you. I cherish you, I acknowledge you, and I send my love and light to you for being a love and light to humanity and how my soul recognizes yours. So I thank you for your existence and for what you're doing for self, for humanity, and all that, that come in your path in your life's journey from the beginning until the end. So I, I, I sincerely thank you. And for the record, um, you have my permission to download and share and upload this podcast wherever you wish once it's uploaded to my Salman Sheikh YouTube channel. So it, this is this is yours as just as much as mine. So I thank you for that, Victoria. And um, I'll put I'll put your contact info and your TikTok info in the description below for the viewers and the listeners to get in touch with you if they need to. So uh, anything else? Uh, let me know. Thank you. I just want to say thank you so much. This is, has been so moving uh, and so touching, and I'm so grateful to you to inviting for inviting me on this podcast. And I really hope that it reaches and it touches those and inspires those who it's who it's meant to reach. And again, many gratitude and thanks to you for your presence, for your light, for the for that which you sustain and and host for others and to and the light and the knowledge and the wisdom that you share
Thank you so much. And um, until next time, th thank you.